Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be editing a photograph from the Photos in Color community in Lightroom. Theme tune. I don't know what this dance is. <laughs> no idea what that dance is. <laughs> anyway, so today I'm going to be editing a photograph from the Photos in Color community. Now if you want me to edit one of your photographs, then you can just send it to me via the Photos in Color Facebook page. Head over there and just drop me a message and I'll send you the link. Now, importantly, and people seem to be missing this, only send me raw files. So JPEG, I just delete it straight away and only three photos. If you send me more than three, I won't look at any of them because I'm getting way too many sent into me right now. So please make sure it's a raw photograph. So, oh, and also follow me on Snapchat. Here it is, wherever that was. So here we go. We are inside Lightroom and we've got this photograph today sent in by Caleb Olivent, um, whoever that is. So remember when you send me your photograph, the file name must be your name. Okay, let's have a quick look. This was shot uh, 55 millimeters on a Sony at one uh, five hundredth of a second. Great, so it's a pretty good landscape. I actually love this photograph. So let's jump into the develop module by clicking up here. Now, straight away we can see that there's obviously some haze in this image, so we get to use the dehaze tool. And we should probably just look at the histogram. Now we can see by looking up here, these are our highlights, and these are our shadows and darks. This is nothing in the dark area down here, lots in the highlights. So we know it's probably overexposed. Well, not overexposed, but we can bring the exposure down. The reason why we know it's not overexposed is if we turn on clipping, we can see that there's absolutely no clipping whatsoever. If I push this up here, and when, when clipping appears, you can see, there we go, the red area means it's 100% white. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing up here, is you can actually manipulate an image in the histogram itself, moving the midtones, moving the shadows, moving the darks. It really is amazing, and that just moves those sliders here. So let's just hit reset a second. So what I would suggest doing, if you find an image that needs to use dehaze, first thing, do a quick check on the image so you can bring it up and down and see if there is, there's lots of haze over here. And then kind of do just a little bit of an edit up here. Don't be too vicious with it and be like, okay, this is kind of looking nice now. And then go straight to the dehaze tool. Now they've put it at the very bottom, but let me explain why. Watch what happens when I add dehaze to this, it's making the whole image darker, it essentially adds contrast. I've now it's boosted all of my blues and the saturation in my colors. If I go the other way, dehaze, um, I'm adding haze, it makes everything lighter and I get rid of all of my colors. So if you were to do this at the end, all of the edits that you do kind of go to waste. So let's jump in, let's see if we can dehaze this. There we go. Right now if I look into my shadows, it's dehazed. I wouldn't want to push this any further like so because it's just made it go too dark and I don't really like it. So I'm going to go around the 27 mark or around 30 actually I think is going to work. 26 we ended up with. I'm pretty happy with that. And we can see that by using the dehaze tool we've kind of fixed the histogram. So you can see it's very powerful down here but definitely do it first if you want to use it. So let's come back up here and now let's take a look at these clouds. I love them but they're a little bit overexposed. Now obviously I can just pull my highlights down but that's doing the entire image and I'm actually going to pull it down quite a lot. But I want to bring out these clouds a little bit more. So for that use the brush tool by selecting this up at the top here and literally I'm going to to help me out I'm actually going to pull the exposure all the way down and I'm going to leave everything else where it is by double clicking effect and then pulling my exposure. This is just so I can visually see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to leave auto mask on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over my clouds okay and what I can see let me just leave my flow at hundred percent so what I can see is it's going to make the clouds look horrible okay but that's the idea. So that I can see what I'm actually doing, I'm not just guessing where it's making the effect, I can now go in here and I'm literally just whipping over these clouds. I'm not trying to be particularly accurate, as you can see, with this, just because I'm not gonna make much of an effect on these. But there we go, we've done that now. Watch what just happened. I can see I missed these areas, I missed the highlights, and I don't mind that, but I've made this big black splodge. 
Now, if I hadn't have made my exposure zero, I wouldn't have seen this. So I can, so now all I have to do, hit erase, flow 100%, and then let's just erase that area out. There we go, it's done that. Anywhere else I've got any problems? No, I think it's kind of, oh, over here a little bit. Just erase that out, and we'll erase that out just there. A little bit more, pretty happy with that. So now what I can do, put my exposure back, and now when I pull back my highlights, I know that I'm only affecting my clouds. Now, it's not really doing much in the highlights, so let's pull the whites back, it's good. What I'm actually gonna do, watch when I boost the clarity, it's really nice to be able to add that little bit of extra tone into the clarity. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is pull back the exposure. Just a hair, there we go. So now let's look at the before and the after. Already a massive, massive difference. Now. Let's jump down here because I want to have a look at it split up, blues and greens essentially. So let's pull back the blues a little bit here so we'll boost that sky just a hair. And what I'm going to do to the greens, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to change the colour of it. So you can see if I go the other way, it's going to make it too green. I'm just going to pull it down towards the yellow. The yellows, I'm actually going to go towards the reds. Okay, so I've actually just made it more jungle-like. By doing that, it's more jungly and less rich forest. And I like that as a look, but just a hair. Look, I don't want to do that very much. So again, this is starting to look really great. Now let's talk about the feeling and the story of this. We've got it looking nice, but who cares for a nice photo? We want to really think about where the drama is. Well, for me, obviously the drama is right here, but we've got a dark side here and a light side here. That's where we have our drama. So let's work with that and enhance it. So to enhance that, we're gonna use the graduated filter and I'm gonna come all the way in on this side, just like so. Now, let's double click effects so it resets it. And what I'm actually gonna do is, cause that's the dark side, I'm gonna add blue. So essentially I've just, put blue into the temperature just a little bit. Now I'm not gonna push this too far, like so. And I'm gonna boost the contrast on that side. I like that a lot actually. And we're gonna leave it there for now. I might want to go back in and edit that because I've added probably too much blue into that. So I'm just gonna bring it back. Let's try adding a little magenta in there too. That's a little bit better. Now I'm gonna add another graduated filter on the other side, but I'm gonna come from the, down below here. And I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna add some yellow into this side. And let's, no, let's not add any green. But this one, okay, I like what's happening here. I'm gonna pull back the shadows, just so it adds a little bit of tone to that side. And now let's have a quick look at the before and the after. Okay, now we're starting to tell that story. So let's elevate the story even more and let's pull in the focus to this top section. Now there's two things we're gonna do to actually highlight this. The first one's this really nice trick that I actually like to do. And that's I'm gonna use the brush tool. I'm actually gonna boost the yellow and the exposure up just a little tiny bit. I'm gonna have auto mask selected and essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around it on the blue side of this, okay? Now, let's put that exposure up at 100% so we can actually see where we're taking effect here. Okay, so we've done that here. Now I'm gonna bring down my flow and then I'm gonna wrap around this here. Okay, and I'm gonna bring my, down my flow more and I'm gonna turn off auto mask and then I'm gonna go around it some more. So you can see I've kind of created a halo kind of thing around this. Now a lot of you might hate what I'm doing here, but I'm just gonna make this a little wider. So you can see what I've done there is essentially I've formed something around that mountain top. Now, when I reset all of these things, I can now play with this. And what I wanna do is I wanna add some yellow to it, just a little bit of warmth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the exposure a tiny amount, just like this. And what I'm also going to do is bring my sharpness and I'm gonna reverse it so it's gonna make that area blurry. Okay, just a little bit. In fact, I've gone too far on the yellow. I'm gonna take the yellow back out of it because I didn't like it. Remember Lightroom, you can always test things and have a nice play around. Now I like that. So now let's do the before and the after. So you can see we've just brought a little bit of drama to the top of the cloud, at the top of the mountain. So then we're gonna take a radial filter. It's all about working in small increments here. I'm not trying to make every change, one change in one go. 
So now let's come in here, radial filter, and I'm gonna make sure it's not on invert, so I'm affecting the outside of this mask, and what I'm gonna do is pull down that exposure, okay? I'm not gonna pull it down 100%, but just a little bit, so now we've got some focus in here. By pressing O, I can see my mask, okay? It's done a pretty good job of that, but I'm gonna blend it that little bit more. Great! So I really like what that's done now, but now I'm gonna take the brush tool, hit erase, Make sure auto mask is not turned on. And I'm gonna start erasing out a little bit more down in these areas. And again, I'm pretty free with my brush here. I'm not trying to be really accurate. I'm just trying to give it some drama. Okay, now I like it. Okay, now one extra thing that we're gonna do, another radial one. So we're gonna add in another one. And this time we're going to set our clarity down a little bit and our sharpness down to zero. And we're gonna add another one in here. Essentially making it blurry. You can see it just there. We're gonna make sure it's not inverted so the outside of this has gone blurry. Now, for this one, I like to really feather it. Hit O, I can see this. Great, so I've really feathered it. And now what I do is go brush, and I'm gonna have a raise selected, and I'm gonna have it down to at about 60. Now the reason for this is I want to paint this out, but I don't just wanna paint it out in one go. Okay, I, this, I really like to do this. Oh, well, and that's my graphics card not enjoying what I'm doing there. It's because I've done a lot to this image now. So you can see what it's doing. My that's my graphics card popping up and saying, ooh, you've gone too far. We don't like what you're doing. So we're actually gonna reduce that down here because it's not gonna allow me to do this very much anymore. I need to speed up my computer. This has never happened to me before. Scary stuff. Anyway, you can see the blue X of death showing up. So essentially the reason why that's appearing, okay, is if you go up here, if yours is doing this all the time, you come up here to Lightroom, Preferences, and what you have to do is go to Performance, and you can change the graphics processor. So I can turn that off. So if I turn that off, what's gonna happen is I'm no longer gonna be getting that, okay? So that's what you can always do if you're getting that blue X, it just works, it uses the system differently. So here we go, I'm just gonna come in here and you can see I've allowed these little areas to stay red because that's my mask and other areas I have not. So now if I take the mask off, you can see I've got some blurry things, but it's not just a, a random blur all the way around. I've just managed to bring in that focus. And I think this image is looking great. Now, the final thing that needs to happen with this, actually there's two things. I haven't looked at the tone curve at all. So let's come in here. I wanna add a little bit of contrast to this image here. Gone too far, you can see already. So I'm gonna lift that back up here. And what I really want to do is I want to add a little bit of red to my shadow. So to do that, put a point in the middle and then I lift up the section down here. Not that much. Wacom tablets are bad for this, so you switch to your mouse. And I'm just gonna lift that up a hair. So you can see the before and the after, including that. I like it, but I've gone too far right here. Too dark on those darks. <laughs> So that's good, I'm gonna lift this up actually, the shadows, now I like it. Okay, final element we're going to do is the crop. Because it's nice, but it's too simple for me. I wanna bring in more focus. So I'll bring this down, and I'm gonna bring this up. Essentially, turning this into a bit of a panorama image. Now, not like that, I got rid of too much of the sky. This now for me, now we have some drama. Oh, I love this image a lot now. Gonna boost my vibrance of everything. This one I do my last retouches, take the brush, and I'm gonna boost my clarity, not too much though, just a little bit. I'm actually gonna boost up my exposure because I have quite a lot of leeway of this image, and I'm gonna paint it in over the top of that. Look at that, that just looks, I'm gonna put my flow all the way up, I'm feeling risky. Oh. So I can't push it too much as you can see. Lift my contrast and my highlights. Oh, now look, before and after. Now we have a beautiful, dramatic 
image, all created inside Lightroom. Okay, so that's how I would edit this photo. How about you? What would you do? Did you like what I did? If you did, give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more videos coming. Now, I used a lot of different techniques here, some quite advanced, some just kind of playing around with an image. Remember, have an artistic vision for where you want to take your photograph and create some drama there. That's what we did with this image. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. This was Ed Gregory for Photos in Color. Dot com. Team tune. I love coffee, by the way. Anybody ever wants to send me coffee, I love it. I live off it.